much. So thank you for being with me here at the last talk for today. Uh, my name is Marcel Kutzmann, I'm from Robert Bosch uh, and I'm coming from the open source management community. Uh, so we started, well, some years ago and therefore I also would make this disclaimer like the colleague from Volvo this morning um, that um, I'm more or less here to, as also someone said, this is an open source event, right? So to not talk about my company, but talking about my community, communities. Um, and uh, we have a new project, but it's all below this um, reference to the work group or open chain automation work group that I also want to pitch here a little bit. Uh, because here uh, we try really, as you can see there in the statement, we are building an open source compliance tool chip ecosystem with open source tools as open source projects. So really open source with open source for open source. <laughs> so uh, at, at, the, at the, not even at the square, at the, the, the potential three. Yeah. Also uh, try to uh, uh, implement the feedback from FOSTEM because I had part of this talk already at FOSTEM, so I uh, used the time to also provide now the QR codes because I have some links. Um, if you want to visit our uh, um, tooling group here, here's uh, the link and the QR code. And um, you will also see some of those things um, are not only my or Bosch's uh, thing, but we have several companies also in this, in this community. And if I talk about we, it might be everyone <laughs> uh, from this community. So, to give you a little bit of background, uh, what we did when we started, um, so we had a very trivial task um, to say, okay, what's inside your code, right? What's inside your product? Uh, because, uh, and here my company really comes in, it says, okay, we want to be compliant, right? We want to be also a good citizen, we want to give back to the community and we want to behave. Um, Properly, right? So, if we have authors, corporate owners that provide us open source licensed products, we also want to fulfill those obligations. In order to do this, well, we need to know what's inside. When we started our journey, we, I always call it, we were in the lucky uh, island, uh, the lucky island, right? We were uh, heavy in, in, in the part, uh, part that I was uh, responsible for. We had a lot of Java, Maven applications, server based applications. Um, why uh, this is easy? Because, well, the ecosystem already provides a very good environment to yeah, provide, uh, to do this uh, dependency resolution. And uh, so we had uh, some of those parameters I added. So as you can see on the right side, you will see this later, um, why I, um, I make this here a fact sheet about Earth. Even if you cannot read all of this, it's just that you get the idea. Um, when we started our journey, we started kind of a planet where we had server based applications, fat clients, mainly hosted, but some also distributed uh, context, uh, agile development methods, uh, CICD, with at that time Jenkins was uh, the hype. Um, and yeah, also from the open source side, only permissive licenses that make it, made it really, really easy. We forget snippets and so on. You can read it on. So when we were done, more or less, I said, okay, yeah, we're done, mission completed, so everything was automated, and with every new release, we automatically got the s bombs, we got the disclosure documents, the source code bundles, etc. But then uh, the next team came in and said, hey, um, we're doing now also front ends uh, in, uh, in web, and we're using JavaScript with NPM. And then we said, okay, then we also need, and well, even worse, because then you're in the browser, so there might be interpretations that says that you have already software distribution, right? Then uh, same thing again. So now we want to automate then all the software open source compliance uh, for that. And here we found already, oh, it's not like, it's, it seems not, it, this planet seems similar, right? Uh, but it's different. I, so therefore I so now made the Mars fact sheet. Um, but we managed it at, at the end and then uh, also tried to transfer the learnings that we had back to our automation that we have for Java Maven. 
and continued uh, journey. Uh, so if I also talk about V in this context, uh, there are several stakeholders or roles in this team. So here we have the open source office, so my part of it, but also the automation developers, right? Because someone also, I'm not developing it yet. It's, uh, we have a team that cares about this automation. We have a creation team, we have a legal team, etc. So we needed to communicate also about what we are doing. And here uh, we then went to the embedded systems. And the embedded systems are, I don't know who, who is from the embedded side, but this is also a different kind of beast, right? If you come from a Java uh, Maven um, uh, site. Also here you see uh, in the open source parameters, uh, we also extended that to recopy map licenses also uh, we had some exceptions for snippets and so on, so it became a little bit more challenging. But also here, uh, finally we managed to do this automation somehow, and here you can see uh, the journey didn't end. And, um, oops, uh, so here the left side, uh, Gradle, I don't know if you can read it, but more and more and always more teams coming in having they were creative, right? Say, ah, oh, we'd be using something new. And we're not there. Um, but this is also not the, the part of, of, this, uh, of this talk, but um, in my title I say, at scale. So what does that mean at scale? So we just, uh, as an open source office, we um, establish this as a central service. Um, so we have, uh, if you have a team, you can come to our, uh, our service and say, okay, we have a repository, uh, can you help us in automating the open source compliance? And uh, then, as I said, our team are different people, then we need to know, okay, what is it, right? And here we found out that it's really helpful to have those fact sheets that you said, saw, right? Like with the Earth, Mars, etc., um, to put all everyone in the picture. Right? And I said, okay, look, there's this new team, this is easy because they're Java Maven, or this is a new team, and this is completely on. On the other side, uh, also, um, we could directly just check with them with this fact sheet, okay, they come to us, and then we ask, okay, yeah, what package manager, dependency management, blah, 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 what do you use? And um, have them really uh, quick, uh, quick information about it. What, what we needed to tackle. The other, the other thing is when we started uh, to not automate, but they obviously already needed without the, information, uh, the automation they needed to do it uh, to fulfill this obligation, we uh, had them a mandatory documentation that we required from them. Um, and then if we already saw, well, we had this already, there was already a team that did this, uh, we had this document concept. The next thing that came with the same setup, more or less, and we said, hey, cool, we can reuse, we can reuse the concept. Right? Uh, that led to also that when we reused it, we improved it, then the improvement fed back to the initial uh, system. And over the years, that also led to some standardization. And with the standardization, you can much easier automate things, right, if this is standardized, if we also having all those, those synergies with the automation. And um, the second thing, um, to also find that much faster, right, so if we have, at the end we had several dozens of concepts, right, and say, mm, is there some concept already that we could reuse, uh, so therefore on the one side the fact sheets was helpful, but on the other side also the standardized documentation. And uh, as I said, uh, our journey is still continuing. Uh, so the next thing that we're uh, trying to fix is then these embedded IoT Linux uh, for automation, because there we still uh, need a lot of uh, manual work there. Um, and so here, if you want, I showed the link earlier, please join the fun. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. We, we can uh, need everyone and every idea, every creative has to help us. And now for the project that I want to mainly uh, present you today with our Eclipse Apoapsis, uh, here are the, the goals that we, we 
have them on one side. There's also the word server, but um, here, um, in order to find really the match, so who has a solution and who has the need to bring together those two parts, um, that is where we wanted to have those fact sheets. Second, also when we share and reuse this stuff, we need this uh, some kind of okay, here's the kitchen, here's the bathroom, etc. This this architecture uh, that everyone can can live with, that we talk the same language, and having also this standardized representation. And standards, uh, standardizing always, for, at least for me, naturally that feels like okay, uh, something also kind of bad, right? But uh, on this side, uh, standardizing also uh, allowed us to be more flexible. This is sounds a little bit strange, right? But we uh, having and the a main project that we base on is the OSS Review Toolkit. It's a really toolkit, so we have a lot of tools, and then we could really select whatever fits best out of this toolkit, and that helped us because we had those standardized interfaces. And uh, in order to show you a little bit, also again on, a, on, a, uh, on an example, uh, on the right side, I thought this would be uh, this online shopping would be a good uh, a good example. Because if uh, a new team comes to us and say, hey, we need a solution, uh, that's more or less, okay, you need to have some way how to identify what's the right solution for, for you. It's like I would search for, for myself and order a t-shirt. So uh, I have several steps and I say, okay, I, I'm, am I a woman, man, or kid? Then which kind of clothing and then t-shirt? And then this is still trivial, right? Because then you have just a list. But in the fourth step, uh, I needed the size. So also for the size, I need some parameters. And um, then where to measure this? So we need some kind of um, common um, standard how to measure this and how this fits then to, for example, for VL, yeah, uh, and that I can work this. And uh, here's where this new project uh, comes in, our process. So um, this name might sound strange for most of you potentially, if you're not astronomy. Astronomy. <laughs> uh, um, uh, side. So I also put two definitions because I liked uh, in the first one the abscess is the fastest. Or, uh, from, from uh, the center of attraction, so I like that part, the high point in the orbit. Uh, I try to make this uh, as a, uh, at least a symbolic uh, picture there, where you have the center of attraction here on the left side, and this little point there on the right side would be the, the apoapsis. And the second definition here, I like this, uh, the point at which an orbiting object is farthest away from the body it's orbiting. Um, why is this important? Because, uh, as you have seen, we had our journey. Uh, if you want to switch between different planets, so then it's a very good point to have the least abstract, uh, attraction from that planet, so that you can jump over to the next one. Um, here again, here's the link. The left one is to the project proposal, and the right side, uh, the right QR code is to our GitHub repository. And uh, what's the content? What uh, do we plan to, to uh, open source there is exactly the, the documentation on the process level that I mentioned to get to this point uh, where we can help each, each one to, to make this matching. Uh, and the lower part, then here we also have some code that we share uh, as we have um, there the org server in Kotlin. So this is the core part. The other part is rather marked down the documentation. So and the other part, as I said, will help you hopefully, uh, hopefully or we should work, want to work together to match your needs to available solutions and jumpstart your process definition really that you can copy paste uh, the stuff and already started it. Also, um, as we're a big company having suppliers, we want to also to provide that to our supply chain. Right? Uh, as I'm also part of the open chain. Um, this is also very important to us. And the second thing is if you are do, also want to do this at scale, 
you can do this with the CLI or Jenkins or GitHub Actions or whatever. Um, but here with the board server, then you can also build your own recursive dependency resolutions type of service uh, out of the box uh, with the board server. Um, the dependencies, because this some some of those versions are not new, uh, so here we also collaborate with with other um, projects. Um, some of you might already have heard about Aspidix. Um, the Aspidix, most of the people know by the bomb. Uh, but here with the SPDX 3.0 we also have new profiles, uh, so for those who are not aware, uh, there's a, a change in the architecture, so we have different profiles and we are currently working for the 3.1 potentially um, on a new profile uh, that is called operations or business profile, um, where we will also put some things, I can show this later, and the second part is uh, that we also, as I said, this is my home community, the tooling group where we already uh, did the first step of standardizing the, um, the wordings uh, in the capability map. On the technical level, uh, there's a very heavy <laughs> in, uh, dependency with the OSS Ruby toolkit, so we're really leveraging uh, here this plus uh, via the new toolkit, uh, Philip he already mentioned, he used also vulnerable code, scan code is orchestrated by our social media toolkit, but um, the server also um, extends this for user management, inventory, etc. So we have then the key code there, for example, and other things. But this is not a technical session. Um, so for explaining a little bit the uh, process level outputs. I try to re-prepare uh, this for today. Um, again, to go more deeper in scaling, right? What does that mean, scaling? And uh, uh, this is a trial, <laughs> uh, because for me, the open chain, there's the supply chain inside. So what I try to do here is to make a little picture about simplified supply chain. So for me, such a chain starts with an open source project upstream. Then there is some part supplier. The uh, open chain material talks about software supplier, but as we have also other elements with digital, no, parts with digital elements, I want it to be more abstract. So there's someone who might reuse the open source material and pr producing a component or a part and then you have the final product vendor um, in automotive OEM and tier one, uh, those as, a, as a, an example. And then at the end, you have uh, the product in market and then you have the consumer. So that would be a very, very simplified um, supply chain. And as I could show you a lot of them in house, but I am not allowed to, um, the, what was the idea? to also make that easier uh, to have a simulation of that. So such a simplified supply chain, so that's what we are currently working on. Um, so that we also have this open, why? Then we can also um, exchange on this, right? Uh, are you open source project, are you part supplier? What, how does the interface look like, etc. And what we started with is uh, to create uh, dummy repositories, uh, and here is also the link in the um, automation work group in the second of this. But this is really, really very early in the beginning, but everyone is welcome because we are still searching for, for dummies. <laughs> um, then if we uh, go a little bit more deeper uh, and look in this supply chain in another dimension, is that what every Thing everyone has in common in this uh, is in this chain are the requirements. So everyone will need in Europe to uh, adhere to the CRA. We have the Biden Act in the US. We have the open chain specifications, etc. Um, so this is what everyone needs to fulfill. And here it makes sense to align along the supply chain to, to work here together. On the, the typical setup is a little bit different in my point of view, so that also I try to, to um, structure this a little bit in open source project. By default, it's typically one project, right? So several uh, suppliers might use several open source projects in their 
sub in inter intermediate project, uh, uh, intermediate art that they deliver to the uh, vendor. And the vendor, like if you look at a car, for example, or a dishwasher, whatever, they have several parts that they integrate to a consumer product. And then you have N parts in one product and N projects, open source projects in N parts, right? So that opens then uh, a bigger, um, yeah, uh, permutation. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if you have those projects, you need to know what's inside. You need this transparency. So you need to manage your contents. You need to identify new components, uh, then the applications or the conformance um, to security uh, SSL CRA by act uh, as one pr uh, provision, um, and then finally also fulfill the obligations. And here, um, this is what you need, even if, if you are an open source project, if you are a supplier, if you are a final product manager, you need to do this. And therefore, we already have such a generic process description. Um, but we will work this out a little bit more in detail um, on the one side. And the other thing is, and now there's another this dimension, you might have organizational setups like in a project, an uh, open source project. Uh, we have, for example, open source foundations where you do not only have one project, but they are umbrella or umbrella projects that have, uh, that have several open source projects uh, and, and uh, govern them. On the other side, also as a, a, a tier one, as a supplier, uh, you typically also have several customers, so you care about different projects. This is an organization setup, I will come back to this later. And third is, and this is an output from the supplier education leaflet from OpenChain, when I said, okay, at the final product vendor, he will use a lot, so the chain is not a, uh, yeah, a single uh, flat chain, it's, it's really typically such a uh, dependency tree, looks, looks really, really weird. And uh, so here, to, to, to come back uh, to do this as an example, so you would have one product, a product could consists of a device software that you put on your computer or whatever, you would have a backend, a frontend, and then typically nowadays you have all those apps for iOS Android. And such an Android app more or less then would again use from open source, Flutter, Android, blah blah blah, all these things. And here, um, what typically most of you will know from the, if you were SPDX bomb, then you will see, ah, okay, then I have a bomb that I can see, uh, what are all the components in this Android app, right? But what SPDX at the moment will not describe is all the facts about the app itself or the backend or the frontend. So there's missing some piece that I showed earlier in the, meeting, in, in, the, in, the, in the slides. And the other thing also, the same for the product, right? So uh, this information that I just uh, mentioned, the product has several aspects of backend, frontend apps. Uh, this is also not described yet by the SPX one, and this is why we uh, sat together and uh, uh, created this SPX operations work group. So here everyone is welcome also to join. So we started here primarily also because at the right side we have then um, yeah, also the business context that comes in, especially for export control, etc. Uh, this is also part uh, in there, then uh, cryptography, etc. Is something that you need uh, to come to a conclusion about export control. And uh, then another dimension, so you see I come from dimension to dimension, is the stakeholders. Yeah, so you have, I try to map this in, into bigger sections the engineering or business or development management. So you have on the um, development level, on an open source project, the maintainer is typically the developer and the manager, right? Uh, except you have bigger projects, or then also in the foundation, you might also have a management as I said, that cares about the governance uh, or a sub community or a project. Uh, on the supplier side, 
you also will have development teams, you will have architects, you just have a bigger organization, right? And uh, then also an open source program office in Oslo that cares about the uh, open source uh, compliance then. And also, if you go more into the direction of, of product or several products, then typically you have the product owner compliance manager. And uh, here, um, each of those stakeholders has different needs, right, and different use cases. And here we also started already in the automation group to, to collect those user stories um, so that we can then find out, okay, what needs to be done for which of those uh, roles. And finally, there are much, much more uh, dimensions that you could still add, for example, on the development side, uh, dimensions that are really important for us for automating it. Because here, if you only look at the technologies, uh, if, as I said at the beginning, Java might be much easier, JavaScript, Python, Go, Rust, so if there's a new team coming in and we already did this, well, that's fine, you can copy paste it. But if someone, for example, would come with Julia at the moment, so yeah, we would not support it at the moment and we need to check. Also for automation is then important, what are this, uh, already the CI CD setups that you use do you already have open source management concepts in place? Uh, so this is all the side of the uh, management. On the other side, for the distribution, if we want to fulfill the obligations, we need to know, well, is it a hosted system, is it a distributed system? And then last but not least, then also depending on your license portfolio, the question, which of the obligations will we expect to be fulfilled? Like, do we need to disclose source code, yes, no, do we have re-engineering re uh, uh, obligations, etc. Uh, so you can see a lot of things and uh, here, therefore, we need something in order to guide people uh, to find the right solution. Uh, and here I come back to this, uh, to this little picture. Uh, here we will um, try in this project to create such a, such a guidance and also link them with the uh, with blueprints because as I said we have first of all a, blue, a toolkit uh, but uh, to find the right tool out of this toolkit is also a challenge uh, and sometimes you need combination of tools so therefore this would be a, what I call a blueprint uh, the correct combination of tools so as one example if I merely know, okay, I'm an open source project, uh, I'm a maintainer of that, and then I have the use case uh, that I just mentioned, the use store as a maintainer for an open source project, I want to get fast feedback about all the abilities of my project so that I can fix them. Right? So this is, I think, everyone should understand. But with this information, it's hard to really open the drawer and say, hey, here's the solution that we need. So, um, therefore, we need more information to have an accurate recommendation. And with those fact sheets that I talked about, about, okay, what product, where is it distributed, etc., what are the technologies, is it Java, is it Python, whatever, then we can really come to the conclusion, open the right drawer, and provide potentially already an existing solution. Then we have two ways how we can uh, approach this side. So one side, uh, we have um, the need, what I did here as an example, number one, where I said, okay, I'm a maintainer, bring me a solution. From the other side, from the other perspective, now I'm a, I have a solution, show me someone who needs it, right? And here, um, this is what I talked about, that we need this matching. So the question here is, this is obviously not complete, but I try to make it a little bit that you understand the idea. So where's the sweet spot of an open source review toolkit, for example? So here, um, if you're a maintainer, DevOps team, if you're single project CICD, if you use some of those, as I showed earlier, those supported package managers, well, then here it is. You can directly use it. And um, here I tried to make it here the frame around one open source project or one project and supplier. If now we compare, and uh, here you will see, please look here in this section, 
where this is one project and this is several projects because then we can say, okay, why do you need then the word server? So where's the sweet spot for them? This, uh, I would not recommend an org server for if you have one project, right? Because this is also a lot of overhead, initial setup, etc. But if you are, uh, for example, a foundation of bigger pro uh, open source project with several sub projects, or if you have several uh, of those teams as we have it in inside in house, then this might be uh, a good choice to say, okay, I will not try to handle it with Word alone, but I will take the Word server. And this is, I think, also, uh, I copied this uh, slide from an, uh, another uh, talk that I made, because, uh, and here, when I copied it in, I thought, okay, well, it sounds like also the pitches that you get from vendors, right? So, and typically they do this pitch with your uh, budget owners, right? So that guarantee the budget. And then the vendor comes with, hey, we can do everything. And then the manager says, hey, cool, then I buy it. And then they drop it on the desk and say, hey, you have the problem, here's the solution. And this is very important that, no, uh, if you have a hammer, every, every screw looks like a nail. Um, that's exactly the problem, that we really need to have a solution that fits. And therefore, I really like that the, uh, the team called it Open Source Review Toolkit, right? So also to, to show, okay, this is not the solution, but this is a toolkit that may help you. And uh, as I said, the org server is around uh, the, or is orchestrating also these Open Source Review Toolkit tools. And here, for those who are not familiar with Open Source Review Toolkit, uh, so I try to be. <laughs> Uh, also fair with others because there are also other uh, implementations of phosology, etc. Depending on your needs, right? Uh, but this is would be the setup with, as we said, we want to have open source compliance management with open source tools, and this is the setup how it would on a high high level work. So you can trigger it manually by CI/CD, or you make a scheduler via the API. This will trigger some magic that. Uh, uh, clones your repository, checks it out, and produces then reports, discover documents, etc. As you wish. The big USP for me is, uh, compared to vendor tooling, configuration as code. So everything that is project specific, because you might have things that are irrelevant, right, so in the report, then you can configure this in your project specific configuration. The same applies also to organization-specific things, because your organization might have special interpretation of licenses or have special rules, deny lists, etc. This is also, you can configure that as code in the system. And for everyone that already needed to configure that in one of those vendor tools, knows what this means and how good this is, that you can have this also. Uh, reproducible for the audit trail in Git with the uh, uh, with the Git history, etc. If you want to need, know more details about how this is working, I, you can just see this. It should still be a, 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 up to date. It's 2021, uh, three years ago. Yes, we did some more improvements. We uh, the OS3 toolkit now supports so much, much more. Uh, package manager, but the principle that I showed there in the talk should still be uh, working and also that you can really download it and uh, try it out. It should be even much easier now with Docker, right? Uh, now, nowadays. <laughs> um, okay, so what is the vision of the server? Uh, the server is because earlier, so you can also run OSS Review Toolkit with via CLI where you can integrate it. Jenkins, uh, GitLab, uh, pipelines, whatever. But uh, here, this is also what we did, but we came to, to limitations. So the vision here was that we want to have an API um, in both directions so that we can trigger it, but that we can also create a uh, data, etc., etc. As I said, we want to have a multi project service. Then, also to be more scalable, because uh, the teams then came to us and said, oh, your uh, pipeline runs for 35 minutes, we want to have it in 10, right? So we, we also needed to uh, 
uh, increase in performance. Uh, also, the setup integration, this is uh, something that you need to be a little bit patient in the next week because for us internally, yes, it's easy setup and integration, but we also want to open source this uh, comfort uh, in the repository. Uh, web fronted is uh, one of the vision, but it's not implemented by our team. Uh, but this was also the beauty of open source that another company came in with the web and said, yes, uh, we would con uh, contribute that part. So they're currently working on this web front end. And as I said, access management, inventory management, this is also something that if you only use it when I see it live or in a, in a GitHub action or Jenkins or whatever, then everyone can see everything and that's sometimes also in bigger setups not so cool and now with the access management uh, so you can have different uh, layers also where you can grant access and uh, visibility. And this is how it looks like, so you have uh, on my level, so I'm not a technician, so if you are uh, interested in more details, please contact me, then we can uh, meeting, also we presented it uh, already in, the, in our uh, meetings in the Open Chain Automation Work Group. Uh, and here you have then, as I said, the black box is then, uh, or the blue box from earlier is now replaced by this old server, so you can access it by an API. Uh, you can trigger it via API, so we have teams that do this pull request based, others do it nightly, or others do it, do it weekly. And here we try also to show them um, in the documentation, and this is really meant as usage blueprints, not use blueprints, uh, so for, because um, this depends on how you want to use open source in your project. And sometimes, as you can see on the right side, these are the ORT uh, sub-workers, are they called here? So this is a typical um, sequence of, you, you do an analyzer, then you download the source code, then the source code is scanned with Philips scan code, for example, that you can also leverage other tools, uh, snippet scanners, like we will uh, hear uh, tomorrow, I think. Then we have Port Advisor, here we uh, leverage again. <laughs> Next, the vulnerable code, you have to get all the security vulnerabilities. We have an evaluator, this is a, a rule engine that you can use, and then you have also a very performant reporter that creates then Cyclodix, uh, SPDX, uh, as bombs that you can have. Uh, you will see this in a second, uh, and also other reports uh, for you and Joey. And uh, yeah, and here I made this also here as a tool X, so via the JVM API, and this was also important for me because unfortunately we are not still at the go at the end goal, at the ambition that we um, really uh, are completely open source, so we still have some teams that still use vendor toolings, and here we could also integrate the weather tools into the system. And here the other uh, target groups comes in, so uh, where there might be a manager that wants to know, okay, every week I want to have an overview, uh, what's the compliance status uh, of my projects, and here you can have dashboards via the API, whatever you want. So the MVP that uh, we currently also open source already, but we really dropped it more or less, so we're working then uh, next week also to improve the documentation, is, well, here as you, you can read it, uh, so it sh should be already able uh, that you can use it, but it's no fun at the moment, I guess. So please uh, either contact us that you can help you, or wait a few weeks and we have an updated the, um, documentation. And uh, how, because I, as I said, I could show a lot internally, but uh, yeah, obviously that would not be cool to show our customer data. So therefore I just said, okay, uh, what, what we do every night, we run uh, tests with the dummies. So here you can see our internal dummies. So this is where we are also working with the community that we can use them from upstream. So we have all the supported Languages C, C Sharp, Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, Custom, and an SPDX um, way how we can also um, support uh, all the others. Uh, so, where you manually just manually create an SPDX project file where you 
lists the dependencies. Then uh, point two, we have those 90 uh, schedulers where we just use here in this case uh, GitHub Actions to, to run the scans and every morning we can see ah, it's passing or failing. Um, and also as one of the standards in the system, we also automatically generate the, the email so you can see every night at two something uh, those uh, scans run. And here uh, you have then the summary, so many issues, so many violations, etc. And I can either uh, react on this, but even more, and this is then point number four, is um, you can post-process all this data. So by design, it's not part of OSS Review Toolkit that you also do this post-processing. So it's just the reports that you get. And so we play it around also with GitHub Actions and post-process it or send it to dependency track from OS, for example, as you can see, there's also the cyclone mix as the bomb that we can just upload and then continue monitoring there. Um, but internally, we also have other consumers of cyclone mix and as bombs. as well. Uh, and also we created, at the moment, still some self-made dashboards that, uh, trust me, not to be shared. <laughs> so we're really waiting for the uh, double open um, web web content for that. So the next steps, and this is also one of my last slides, I think, is as I said, uh, we are now, as we really use also this tool internally, so we also need it to uh, yeah, migrate to this new setup, and that uh, we have uh, a little team that, that needed that time, but they promised the next weeks we will also, as we are interested in being over more contributions and adopters for this. Uh, on the process level document side, you will see if you click in, uh, in GitHub, there's only the word server repository at the moment. So I already requested that I get my own other repository that I can also provide all this process level documentation that we already have. And uh, we're currently aligning then with the operations workgroup from SPDX, as I said, and also the automation workgroup. Plus the word community also about the working mode because we said, okay, potentially we'll make the same using the same meetings so that we don't need to switch between the meetings. And uh, we prepared uh, some updates then for the events in autumn. Uh, so then hopefully we have everything ready so that we can also uh, show a little bit more mature what the social project at, at that point. And let's see how far the uh, developing colleagues are then also with the front end. And uh, I'm a little bit astonished because I really made it in 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, but if I could talk for hours if you want, uh, but I would leave it like this and then rather switch if you are interested to an uh, interactive one where you ask questions and I give answers. Otherwise, here again, here this is the, the smaller one to be uh, the smaller QR code is the a link to the OpenChain Global Calendar where you can see all our meetings. So we meet every second, uh, every first and third Wednesday in the uh, in the month. Uh, the first Wednesday is in the morning for Asia, rather. Uh, the second Wednesday is around in the afternoon, also to catch with the uh, U.S. American uh, side. Except the next month. So the next one is tomorrow. Would be on, on Wednesday, but. Uh, we potentially need to skip that because here we are in Sweden, most of us. And um, the and next one in the correct row would be then on the 1st of May. That is, um, as far as I know, the, the only global public holiday, so we shifted it to the 8th. But in general, it's the 1st and the 3rd Wednesday, so you will come to join us. And we always try to keep this open chain program calendar with also the, all the access uh, information here up to date. And the big one is uh, the link to our GitHub uh, sharing credits value um, GitHub repository. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, if there are questions, then you're welcome. Can you explain again what you put on your practice sheets?
because I've seen this talk a few times and I'm not understanding the clothing analogy. So, can you tell me what you actually put on the fact sheets and give an example? Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, I didn't go more into detail because this is the non open source part that we typically put in the fact sheets. Um, so, as we have, uh, as I said, the product fact sheet is. Uh, for me more about the, the distribution setup, so the business context. Okay, is it just a, a tool that we use in Germany? Because then the risk level obviously is a little bit lower than if I share it in millions of vehicles or have it then published in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, uh, via portal or something like that. Because then I have a, have a bigger attack surface. Uh, that's point number one. Uh, point number two is also um, then what we collect there is the way how we need then to provide the disclosure document, the FOSS compliance bundle, right? So if I can uh, just put it together with the product uh, for download in the same website, yeah, or if I integrate it in the in the app, ideally, because then it's it's perfectly linked, or if I have a very uh, challenging uh, 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 supply chain set up with hardware that is shipped all, all over the process. Such things that you won't get from the repository, right? So you need to get this information some have it potentially in SAP or whatever system. And the second uh, level, um, yeah, perhaps just to add there, <laughs> because I said this is not open source also, um, in this setup from the beginning, blah, 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 uh, here, um, if, if you are here on the supplier side uh, and you have here then also a customer, right? And this customer could also come with additional requirements. Like they have, for example, a deny list or something like that. Or they have special, uh, they plan in specific jurisdictions where you have to fit. So really that, that impacts then your whole process of fulfilling obligation laws and things like that. So this is all of this. Uh, on this level, and yeah, it's perhaps uh, not bad that I, uh, I'm uh, back to this slide because on the second part so where I, that I mentioned this um, this level fact sheet, yeah, this is where I really want to know okay what is the backend, right? Um, here, um, which which of the technologies are you using to do the backend to implement it? Uh, what are here? Uh, your, also your needs, how often do you deploy this so that I just get an idea. Uh, but I think what is important also uh, about these fact sheets is also the timing when we fill this, right? Because if, if the system is already deployed, well then obviously you know all of this. But in the, in the uh, phase of development, uh, we need this information very early. Maybe also this changes, right? So that because we also need some time to prepare the uh, the automation, so that we ideally have some onboarding phase in the beginning, where the project team st just starts to develop, so that we say, okay, but could you give us some hint, what will be then the product and the loop in the end, so that we can prepare this. Uh, so to have really this com communication. And uh, this is uh, in the operations, if you follow this uh, um, link, there's already a JSON scheme uh, available, an initial one from UMO with the export control, and there's another branch with, with the fields that I proposed there uh, for product and uh, development. So you can just have a look, and I tried to add also the descriptions there. But this is, and please, <laughs> Welcome uh, to collaborate there because uh, yeah, I my main interest is to have that ideally standardized that this is not a Bosch specific thing and that we but that we can really have this uh, aligned with all the community. Okay. Other questions? All right. Thank you very much.